Hey everybody, Doug Rucker here, PressureCleaningSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. Hey, going to talk to you a little bit about the Kingslinger, some updates I've made over the last few months, um, just some quality improvements I think you're going to like. Um, do a little bit of instructions on usage, how to use, how to install on the compressor. Um, just a lot of things I kind of want to go over. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of hints in here you can get, even if you don't have this system, uh, that you can apply to your existing system. So stay tuned for those coming up next. All right, guys, uh, one of the first things, when we first came out with these several months ago, probably a year or so ago, um, we were using a five gallon per minute pump um, and the smaller plate. And so one of the things I did when we went to the 10 gallon per minute dual pump like this, um, what we did was we got a little piece of plate and kind of hung it down from here. I'll show a picture um, in just a second or during this. Um, and so it kind of was a little flimsy. I just didn't like the way this was mounted. I didn't like how it looked. I didn't like um, the movement that the pump could make while it was mounted on the plate. So um, what we've done is we went to a plate like this where we can actually install both the 10 gallon per minute, not both, but either the 10 gallon per minute pump, or we can, we have the holes pre-drilled for the five gallon per minute pump. So if you start off with the five gallon and later want to upgrade to the 10 gallon per minute pump, you don't have to get a new plate. You don't have to get a little piece of metal or whatever to adapt to it. Um, it's all set up to do that. It's a nice wider piece of metal also. Um, so it, it, it helps your metering valves, the tsunami, everything is quite a bit more stable. So that's one change that I've made is going from that skinnier, smaller piece to where we don't have to adapt that piece of metal to the 10 gallon per minute pump. We can use any uh, either the five or the 10 gallon per minute pump. So um, that's one improvement that we've made. You know, um, another thing I need to interject here is these little pumps here, they only come in five gallon per minute pumps. This here is two five gallon per minute pumps that are stacked together. Um, we get those directly from Flowjet. Uh, when we originally started selling these, we were buying these online at various places, eBay, CleanRight, whatever. Um, and we were negotiating, trying to get great pricing from them, but they had advertised these as seven gallon per minute pumps. And we actually found out through a customer who had purchased that these were not seven gallon per minute pumps. They're actually five gallon per minute pumps. Flowjet does not make a seven gallon per minute pump. So if you see seven gallon per minute pumps advertised out there, they are not made, they're mislabeled, they're advertised wrong. Um, so if you're a customer, we think we've contacted all our customers that bought pumps thinking they were seven gallon per minute, but they got a five gallon per minute pump. But if you're one of those customers and we haven't gotten to you, um, because when we were making these sales back then, they were spread out of, over different areas where people could purchase online or through Square or through QuickBooks or whatever. Anyway, if we haven't found you and you think you're one of those that got a five gallon per minute pump and you wanted the seven or bought the seven and we advertised it as the seven, um, give me an email, dougruckerstore at gmail.com and let me know. We've got a special deal for folks like that that we're upgrading them to the 10 gallon per minute pump um, or doing something for them to justify because um, I feel bad that people got a, a five gallon per minute pump when we thought they were seven gallon per minute. We didn't do it intentionally. Um, it's just the, the way they were advertised. But that's the only flow rates that they make are 10 gallon per minutes and 
five gallon per minute. So those combinations are all you can do. Um, if you wanted to get your own 10 gallon per minute pump, I guess you could buy two five gallons and try to put them together or whatever, but that's basically what this already is. So I just kind of wanted to square that up and uh, let people know, especially the customers that bought those under the wrong um, marketing or advertising or however we did that, uh, the seven gallon per minute, there's just no seven gallon per minute pump available. So if you've got one of those and we haven't contacted you and we haven't quote settled up with you, let us know because we want to make it right. All right. So when you buy just the pump station, whether you buy just the pump station or you get the compressor from us too, which we always just recommend that people get the compressor on their own from Northern Tool um, or wherever, whatever compressor they want to hook it to. Um, it'll just save you money. If you want us to get the compressor for you too, we've got money built into that to do that um, for processing it and getting you your invoice. Um, it's just that if you ever have a problem or an issue with the compressor, you're going to have to take it back and handle the warranty stuff with Northern Tool. But if you want us to handle getting you um, the compressor, we can absolutely, absolutely um, do that. But we just think it's best and you can save a lot of money. Just walk in Northern Tool or order it online um, yourself and you'll save yourself a bunch of money. So this is basically how the pump station looks. Um, one of the things we've got here is the 10 gallon per minute uh, air diaphragm system, dual five gallon per minute pumps. They are Viton. Um, we've also got the uh, GF mixing valves here. And so uh, then we have the Tsunami water air filter. One of the changes that we've made is we went from that yellow curly hose. I didn't like the way it looked. And I also really didn't like that hose. It's really hard and brittle, um, very hard to get onto the nipple up here for the air. So we switched it to this poly braid hose. So um, one of the nice things about this is if you get water in this line or whatever, you can actually see it. And it kind of tells you you're not doing a good job of uh, emptying your water tanks or um, you may have some water in here that's backed up. These have a float in them. They are supposed to release the water if it gets full, but I still take mine and unscrew the bottom of it and just check it every now and then. So that's basically what the front of it looks like. On the back, we've got all stainless steel hardware. And so when we ship it to you, you get it with these nuts and bolts in it to attach to your compressor. I'm going to show you in a minute um, how you attach that. Hey guys, if you're getting value out of this uh, video, uh, give me a like, give me a comment, uh, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so that you get notifications when I come out with videos. And by all means, and most importantly, ask me a question. Um, if I can help you, I'd love to help you out as best I can. And uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment and ask a question and uh, check out my channel for other videos I think can be helpful for you, especially if you're just starting a business. And don't forget about my online pressure washing school. If you're not in the Houston area, that's available to you. Over 260 training videos. We have tests for roof cleaning, uh, house washing, concrete cleaning, and plant property protection. So it'll drastically help you cut your learning curve if you're just getting started. I uh, hope it's been helpful. Subscribe, bell, like, comment, question. Thanks, guys. Now, also, just to let you know, there is an option where you can go with the Pentair, the little bit cheaper valves, and save yourself some money. I recommend the GF valves. Just spend the, the extra, I think it's 200 bucks to get the GF valves over the Pentair. But if you want the Pentair, we have that option for you um, and can save you a little bit of money. But uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is on the back, when we do the GF valves, we actually um, screw or attach the middle valve to the plate. So it just gives it more stability, especially if you're driving down the road, your valves aren't bouncing around. It just kind of helps. We can't do that on the Pentair because that's not, they don't have the screw holes in the back. But... I've never had an issue with my Pentair valves when I first started out. Never had an issue with them leaking or bouncing around because they're braced really good 
to the plate. But just did want to point that out as another little quality control thing that we do um, for the GF valve board. Okay, let's get into talking about actually attaching your pump station to uh, the compressor. Um, I've kind of got here the tools that you're going to need, or at least the tools that I use. Um, when you get the uh, pump station, you're going to have your bolts and your nuts uh, in here, and the four little screw holes that are going to attach to the frame of the compressor. And so when I do that, I'm going to back this camera up just a little bit so I don't hit the uh, tripod. I'm kind of like a bull in a china closet sometime. But I use a couple of these clamps to clamp this onto it. And so what you're doing is when you get your package, you'll get a package like this that comes with all of your fittings that you need. If I can find where it opens right here. Like they taped it. Um, so you'll get banjo fittings. Um, half inch or if you ordered three quarter there's an option these are for your inlet fittings on the back of the uh, pump station so you'll get these you'll also get one like this that you can direct if you want to sometimes guys need to do that so that comes with it and then you get a dust cup or dust cover for the valve one of the valves I don't use okay and the reason i don't use it is it's a soap valve a lot of guys like to mix their soap i've just never found the need to do that um, i just add my soap to my mix it just saves a lot of headaches saves a lot of time i'm not draining um, you know these meters can draw a lot of solutions so i don't want to have to be filling up my soap bucket on jobs but what i do use that middle valve for is i've made up something like this which you can make very easily with one of your fittings or get an extra fitting. Um, and, you know, it allows me to attach it to here. And so now I can use that middle valve and drop this into, say, a bucket or a tank. Say I, I, we use wrap for removing oxidation on gutters or buildings or whatever. So now I can just use this for wrap, this valve, or I can use it for degreaser or whatever I needed to use it for. It's not dedicated to soap, or it's a backup valve in case I have a problem with a check valve on a job or whatever. I can easily reach back here and move my bleach valve over or my water valve over where, wherever I'm having the problem. So just gives me a little bit more versatility and the fact that I don't need to meter soap. You want to always meter your water and your bleach. <clears throat> I've heard some guys say you don't need to meter your water. I like to meter it because it gives me the ability to turn the water down if I need to, which can make my bleach mix a little bit stronger. So anyway, getting into the installation of it, um, you want to put your fittings on the back, your cam locks, and then you're going to hold this up and you want to get this up as high as you can go. It's usually about two and a quarter inch from the top of this ridge is where I go. And so once I get it in position, um, I'll use these clamps. All right, so once you get it lined up, and the easiest way to do it is, because you've already got your holes drilled, and I should tell you, while that thing is clamped, what I'm doing is I'm using the drill to mark my spot. I'm not doing it with a pin or anything, but while it's clamped with the clamps, like this gotta remember to try to put in the same spot every time so it won't move that's why you should never buy tools at Harbor Freight sometimes uh, anyway, so it's it's held on there. What I use is a drill while it's clamped, and I just go around and mark my spots. You have to turn this valve to get your drill bit in there. And then once I've got them marked, I pull it off and then drill my holes and get those holes straight. That's another problem we used to have is 
the drilling wasn't the best and screws would be crooked and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, that's, that's what you want to do is get it lined up like that. And then we'll get our screws. Get those put through. Then once those are in, what I use, if I can get that through there. What I use is a long-handled screw uh, electric screwdriver. You don't need it if you're doing doing one. You can do them all manually if you want. But put that in to your screw, and then get your nuts on. I use a small little adjustable wrench. And just tighten them away. Use the right size bit. <laughs> um, And then you do the same thing to the other side and then pump station is installed. Go ahead and put these back in. By the way, if you ever have a problem with these fittings, they crack or whatever, um, we've got replacement parts. You can get those if you need to, but go ahead and get these put back in. Remember this one goes down. The top one has a little clip. It's always a little tough to get the bottom one in because that clip wants to slide down. But once you get them in, just make sure you slide the bottom clip up and the top clip down and then it's in there. And then this one goes back like so. And one thing you can always tell to make sure that you get them in the right place on the uh, back side over here there's arrows that point the direction of the flow so this this has got an arrow over here that says it goes down there's an arrow for this one that says it's coming up um, so that's your inlet and then that's your outlet to your hose reel so that's how you install it drill your hose holes carefully make sure you get them straight and then put your nuts and bolts in that came with it and you're good to go all right guys i want to talk to you a little bit about the valves because that's one of the things i get a lot of questions on um, i use this one over here as the water it's closest to the pump um, and so this the water should just always be on full open all the way open uh, this is the, my bleach valve. I've used this one over here, and of course the middle one is used whenever I just need it. But if you were to turn this all the way up, that's going to be about a 50-50 mix. And so to me, just each quarter turn is what I go by is going to take my mix down by about 20% or 10%. So if this is 50-50, I just go to there, 40, to the middle is about 30, 20, 10 so on. You just kind of have to play with it to get it to where you know you're comfortable depending on the surface and the degree of staining that you're cleaning. Um, as I've got up in the notes there uh, in the description on the website you know dirty surfaces, poor surfaces require stronger, smooth surfaces require a lighter mix. So you just got to kind of play around with it, but just remember full open here, full open here is a 50-50 mix, and then you can just kind of start adjusting. These are very, very good metering valves. Um, so that's basically your guide that you want to go by um, for your valves. And then once you're done cleaning, I usually time it a couple of minutes before when I know I'm not going to need bleach. And I'll either go over or one of the guys will go over, will turn the bleach off and just start exhausting the bleach that's in the line and get to water. And then we run water through the pump for about two minutes to kind of, two or three minutes to kind of flush that, uh, flush the pump out and keep it clean. 
Um, here we have a on off switch for your air um, off the tsunami. So once you start the uh, compressor up, I usually always leave this off and let the compressor build up. And then I slowly turn this on and get the uh, air going to the to the pump so we get kind of full air hitting it, hitting that pump as soon as we're ready for it. So on the other side here, uh, we've got your inlet and your outlet. I will explain how the inlet comes in first. It comes in from your banjo fittings back here. These are your inlet valves. And so your water and your soap come down here after being metered together. It comes this way through the pump and then down through here. And so you, you'll get a fitting like this that goes here, whether you're using uh, three quarter inch hose, you'll get a half inch by three quarter fitting. Or like I use, I just use half inch hose, um, a half inch threaded by half inch barb that would go on here. You wanna dope it up, put it on, and then this would go to uh, your hose reel and then of course onto your hose. So that's how the inlets and outlets work. Again, uh, we have these parts, should they fail or you crack them or whatever, um, you don't rinse it out often enough, it's gonna, it's gonna cause some issues sometimes with the O-rings and things of that nature in there. So, but we do have the spare parts. And just so you know, people ask, what's the warranty on this? The warranty on, your, on the compressor is a 90 day commercial warranty that's through northern tool we don't warranty anything on the compressor um, you have to handle all of that with uh, northern tool yourself um, from here to here nothing is under warranty okay you're running bleach through it bleach is corrosive um, so we don't warranty anything if the pump fails you've got to buy a new pump i just want to be upfront about that nobody's going to warranty these pumps when you've got bleach running through them for a period of time. So if you have a problem at initial setup, um, let us know and we can help you. But once bleach starts running through there and then you've got guys that are over pressurizing them too, you're not supposed to run this more than 90 PSI, um, but you've got guys that will run them up to 140 and 150 to show how far they can shoot and all that. I've done that myself. Matter of fact, on one of our units, we're running it at 140 PSI to see how long it goes. Because when you up your PSI, and I'll show you that in a little bit, you're going to get more distance and you're going to get more flow. Um, but mainly you get more distance because you've got more pressure. But, you know, we've had some guys that send the pumps back and we repair them. We can rebuild them if you want to. Um, but for the most part, these aren't under warranty. So um, it's always a good idea sometimes to have a spare if you need one and uh, uh, ours have been lasting a long time because we flush them all the time. But I know guys, some guys that don't, especially guys with employees, just seems like the employees don't care, take care of them as well as uh, individual owners. But um, that's how your inlet and your outlet works. And now I'm gonna show you the back side of it where your banjo fittings are. All right, guys, so on the back side of the pump station, these are your inlets. This is the bleach. This is the water, and so you're going to run, if you're using half-inch banjo fittings, you're going to run a half-inch hose from here to your bleach tank, and then you're going to run a half-inch hose from here to your water tank. Um, and I suggest you kind of go down underneath or through here, uh, panduit, strap them together. That's one of the things we've done here is on the yellow hose for your uh, air hose, we strap it to the base, so I suggest you do that because this pipe gets really hot to the touch. You don't want this hose touching this or it can burn through it. So don't leave it dangling out um, because it could you know, swing in and touch it from vibration or driving down the road or whatever. So um, that's how you do your plumbing, half inch or three quarter inch hose, whichever size you decide uh, the options that you can choose is gonna go from the banjo to your tank and I'll talk to you about the plumbing kits that are available next. Okay guys for the plumbing kits that we have for these that is now an option um, because we always got a lot of questions how do I plumb this to the tank what all I need so we decided to make plumbing kits available and what you're going to get is you can choose between a roll 
of half inch hose or two rolls we just you know depending on how many feet i would just tell you always it's a good idea to have extra hose left over just never know when you're going to need some but you've got your choice to get these in half inch or three quarter which would be for your inlet fittings if you're going to use a soap tank you can get those in quarter inch or uh half uh three eighths inch e either size but basically what they're going to come with is your bulkhead fitting that goes to your tank um, and you can choose three quarter or half inch either way um, i use half inch and so this is what it would look like you get a 90 for the top of the tank and then you get a uh, straight barb that comes down from the bottom and basically and i'll link a video up above that you can watch um, uh, it's a video older video about how to install bulkhead fittings and uh, I think in that video I was using drop tubes and you can use those or what I actually use now is just some of this hose and drop it down into the tank so it would basically it let's say this is the top of your tank it's basically gonna look like this with half inch hose going back to your valves or your banjo fittings on the back of the compressor and then what I do is I take a, a half inch hose like this and I measure it to go so it goes to the bottom of the tank with a little bit uh, left over and I just use a PVC 90 like this and and kind of stick it through and that helps keep it weighted down and onto the bottom and also keeps the hose lifted up off of the bottom of the tank I don't necessarily need um, or use uh, filters on the bottom I think they block the flow I've mentioned that before in another video um, so it just sits there we never have to open our bleach tank or our water tank because everything is filled um, from outside the tank uh, so that's basically how it works of course you want to put a clamp on these and a clamp up here and you want to make sure this bottom one is doped really good and really tight don't over tighten it but get it really snug because this bottom one a lot of times is where most guys have problems with air leaks and so you want to make sure that that's done really good so if you're plumbing uh, bleach and a water tank you're going to need a couple of plumbing kits um, depending on how far the compressor is to the tanks uh, we sell the half inch hose and the three quarter inch hose and the quarter inch hose and the three eighths and 25 foot length. So if you think you need more than 25 foot, you're just going to have to buy another 25 foot roll. Um, and then, like I said, it's always good to have extras. So um, that's how you do the plumbing for the uh, systems for the Kingslinger soft wash system. Very easy. And like I said uh, earlier, there's another video I have exactly on how to install them using the tools that you need, the hole saws that you need to make your, make your holes. I think even show how to prevent shavings from getting in or just always make sure you vacuum them out. Okay, so that's your plumbing for the Kingslinger. Don't forget guys, when you've got an air diaphragm system like this and you've got an air compressor, it's very cool that you can help people when they have flat tires or need uh, air for something. You can use different air tools. But the really cool thing is when your daughter comes by the shop when she's home from college and says, Daddy, can you check my tires? The air lights coming on on my dashboard. So I was able to quickly go around, check all the pressure, feel what was needed. Uh, but anyway, just a good positive thing about having an air diaphragm system is the air compressor comes in very handy. Um, for it, you know, lots of different uses. So uh, just wanted to kind of take a break and mention something about that and show my daughter off too. If you want a hose like this, like I was talking about before, um, for that third valve, if you're gonna do like me and not run your soap to a soap tank, then all you need to do is buy the proper size. Uh... Now, a reminder, if you want a hose like this that you can use for uh, that third valve, if you're going to do like me and not use a soap tank, then uh, again, having extra hose left over is a plus. You'll just need another banjo fitting like this and put it into your hose, clamp it, and that gives you the ability to stick this into a bucket or a separate tank or whatever you're going to stick it into um, to draw your uh, solution out that you're using that third 
file for. So uh, make sure you order yourself an extra banjo fitting off the website if you want to do something like that. Another thing I want to talk to you guys about are these oils that I use. These are called high performance lubricants. The absolute best oils that I've ever used. Um, we have these on our website and I don't make a dime off of them. I just sell them for the uh, guy that owns it and distributes it across the way from us. Um, Edwin, some of you guys have probably met him. Um, but they have these for compressors, for engines, differential. This little can of spray lubricant beats WD-40 and all these other lubricants out there all over the place. Um, when you get your compressor, you're going to get a cheap oil like this. And it's just a regular 10W-30. But I would highly recommend you getting one of these oils, getting the uh, oils off of our website. I started using these in all of our vehicles, uh, personal vehicles as well as our company trucks, um, all of my pressure washers, and I just can't tell you how much better they run, um, less frequent oil changes. Um, as a matter of fact, I want to put a video, link a video up above that we did not too long ago um, talking about these oils, just some more information. But again, I don't make anything off these. Um, I would say I don't care if you buy them or not because I don't make any money, but I do care because I do feel they're going to help your uh, equipment and your vehicles run much longer and save you money with a lot less frequent oil changes. So they're on our website. Um, check those out. And uh, they're a little bit more expensive than your regular store-bought oils, but they're very, very uh, well worth it and will save you a ton of money in the long run. Okay, one of the other options that you can choose when you're uh, buying the uh, Kingslinger soft wash system is a soft wash hose. We sell a great yellow ag hose that's used for that. Um, very soft, doesn't kink very easy. Um, so if you want one of those, you can get one of those. We also have, we also sell different types of guns. This is the one that I love to use, this ball valve. Um, it's just a much better quality ball valve than, say, something like this one here. A lot of guys will use. You can get that at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and they work. Um, but they have a tendency sometimes to crack. So you just want to be careful um, in using these and maybe change them out a little frequently before they uh, go bad. And I don't mean like every month, but uh, you know, a year, two years or whatever, you might want to switch those out. I've got some of these uh, type PVC ball valves. They're, a little, they're quite a bit more expensive, but they, they last forever. Um, so I use that because it doesn't restrict the flow. I get the most distance using those. We also have the Sutner gun, like everybody else sells. We have the Udor gun. Um, a gun is nice because when you release the trigger, it stops the flow versus having to, I'm spraying like this and I have to reach up and pull, uh, turn the trigger. So that's a nice safety feature to have because if you drop this on a roof, um, it stops spraying immediately. The, uh, but they do kind of, you know, because you're running bleach through them, um, they're going to fail. So it's always good to have a backup. Anytime you're dealing with bleach, you want to back up to everything. In some cases, you want to back up to the backup. Um, so those are the guns that we sell. Again, guns are going to restrict your distance and your flow because it's a gun and it's having to go and change direction, that type of thing, whereas this is full open, it goes straight. Um, the other thing is your J-Rod. We have a option to choose the Kingslinger J-Rod. That's the uh, nozzles that I use, an 0020, an 0040, uh, 2520, or 2540. Um, you can also get one of our new shooter tips. Uh, these are actually designed for pressure washers. They have the hex all the way around it so that you can tighten it onto your J-Rod or quarter inch, plug, uh, quarter inch plug if you need to. You can get one of those. This comes in a two to three gallon per minute. That's the one I would recommend if you're going to use it for soft washing. Um, but we have them three different sizes for uh, three different, you know, gallons per minute of your machine. I think it's like two to four, four to seven, eight to ten, or something like that. But these are on sale right now for 22 bucks. They're great. 
Um, I'll throw up a picture of us using the ones that we use on our eight and nine gallon per minute machines. But uh, that's your gun choices. And of course, you want to choose your J-Rod, get the nozzles that you need. I like the 0020 because it gives me the most amount of distance and the best control because I don't like flooding surfaces. I'm not a big proponent of some of these, you know, gas powered machines, um, boosters and all this kind of stuff that just flood surfaces. I think it's just a waste and um, you don't need that, that much uh, solution on the surface for it to clean because the bleach just needs to be able to work. So now if you're in a speed process and you got a big building, yeah, I can see that coming in handy, but for residential, man, you wanna be careful with how much solution you're spraying around uh, people's houses and that type of thing. So that's the guns that you have as, as an option that you can uh, choose if you need one. And uh, again, my favorite is the ball valve one. So also know guys that Air diaphragm, 12 volt, booster, uh, gas powered, doesn't matter what it is, you're gonna have issues along the way. You're gonna have pumps fail because you use bleach. Air diaphragm, these type of pumps to me are no different than a 12 volt. You wanna have a spare just in case you need to change it out, it stops working or whatever. Um, we do have kits available where you can rebuild them. We're actually rebuilding this one for a customer that uh, used it for about a year, maybe a little over a year. And so we're, we've taken it apart. Um, we're gonna put, uh, rebuild it for him because it was a little bit cheaper than uh, buying a new one. Um, but what he actually did was he bought a brand new one and he's having this one rebuilt. Um, so it'll be his spare in case uh, the new one, whenever, the, not in case, but whenever the new one um, goes out, he'll be able to slap this one on. So always consider backups to your backups for any type of uh, equipment, pumps, guns, all that kind of stuff, anytime you're running bleach through them. Hey guys, you know, uh, air compressor units like this, these smaller versions, small footprints like this. They've been out for quite a few years. I remember um, my first recollection was Kevin Enderly coming out with them um, several, many years ago, um, back on the old, back when the old forum days was around. But these are out and available. A lot of guys have copied this and are selling these. Um, and that's okay. Uh, you know, you just gotta decide who you wanna buy it from. But my hope is whether you buy it from us or somebody else that, this will be helpful to you um, in installing it and operating it and things of that nature. In fact, if you're a Kingslinger customer and you've purchased one of these units from us before, make sure you contact us because anytime you need the pump rebuilt or you need parts or whatever, we're gonna put you on a discount list so you can get these parts and replacement pumps and all of that at a good, very, very good attractive discount for the people that have purchased from us. Um, it'll be something that only you can use. It's not out there for the general public. Um, but, you know, if anybody wants to buy our plumbing kits and pumps and all that kind of stuff that hasn't bought from us, well, you can surely do that. But we just wanna reward our customers that are buying from us. And so we've got a special discount reserved for you anytime you need to buy a new Tsunami, a new valve, a new pump, whatever it is, little parts, um, things of that nature. If you've bought a Kingslinger from us anytime since we started selling these, uh, shoot me an email so I can get you on the list so that, uh, and it'll be an automatic thing when you check out. Um, it just applies your discount to it, all right?